In today's episode of In the Hot Seat, Carbide's VP of Sales and Marketing, Michelle Russell, will be sitting down with our guest, Victor Oha, to discuss security awareness training from a cybersecurity expert's perspective. They'll be answering questions like, what does it mean to have a security-driven culture in your business and why is it important for startups and enterprises? How can cybersecurity awareness training enable and develop a security-driven culture? What are the key steps to building a strong security awareness training program? What are the tools and methods startups can use to build a security awareness training program? All right. Well, great to be here with you, Victor. My yeah. first question is, what does it mean to have a security-driven culture in your business? Why is it important you know, for both startups and enterprises? Yeah, it's, it's nice to meet you today. So what it means to have a security-driven culture in your business simply means having security embedded in the DNA of your organization. One way you can achieve this is by having a top-down approach. So meaning it has to start from the leadership all the way to the employees. They can ensure that they have security frameworks in place. They can ensure that they have security processes and procedures in place, and also ensure that these policies and procedures are all enforced within the organization, making sure that data are protected within the organization, making sure the network, the applications, everything that has to do with, you know, business driven things has to be secured. So it's the responsibility of the employees and responsibility of the leaders. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree. The culture of security and, and awareness, it, it really does start at the top. It is almost inspirational when it comes to embedding it into the DNA of the company and certainly organizations that have a strong leadership buy-in that push that message down from the top and make it really part of the mission and vision of the company as well tend to do very well with this type of implementation. Your employees are are so critical. They're your first line of defense. And the more we know, the better we are and the better we can protect our companies. Absolutely. Okay. So how can cybersecurity awareness training enable and develop a security-driven culture in your mind, Victor? Yeah, that's, that's a very good one. One way you can do that is by providing the employees within the organization the necessary skills and knowledge to identify threats and also to protect themselves. To do this, what you should ensure that your cybersecurity training, you know, has the necessary content. So when I mean the necessary content, everything that has to do with security. So password protection, phishing, social engineering, and as many as we can think of, making sure that our cybersecurity program is concrete. That way, you know, our employees can stand firm and say, our organization is protected, our organization is secured. We can do things necessary to make sure, you know, security is part of also the DNA of the organization. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, you raise a really good point there. It's, it's not just about acknowledging a policy, right? It, it's not about reading something and just saying, yeah, I got it. Don't worry about it. I mean, you really need to test the comprehension of the content and do the employees in the organization understand what's been presented and, and have we set them up for success ultimately, right? Absolutely. The employees understanding the, the role they have to play in terms of security, it's really, really important. Mm -hmm. I've seen some really great like gamification to of, of these types of things, which, you know, not only make it fun, but make it sticky. Absolutely. Some, some employees, you know, they want to be the one being identified as the most security driven person within the organization. Of course, I want to be the one, you know, everybody says he is very good with security. He knows what to do. So I want to be the go-to person when it comes to any cybersecurity issues. And it doesn't have to be me because I'm a security professional. Anybody can be that. I've been in, you know, I've seen where within organizations where 
um, someone in HR department has knowledge of security more than someone in IT department. It's possible sometimes it happens, right? So that is the kind of thing every organization should push for. Security is not, you know, just a one-man game. It's an everybody game. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. It's everyone's responsibility. So what are the key steps to building a strong security awareness training program? Well, yeah, so this is where most organizations get it wrong. I'm going to list out the steps an organization can follow to ensure security, you know, is concrete. So one way is by identifying, you know, the needs of the organization. So doing a risk assessment of the organization, you want to make sure that your cyber security content is still towards the needs of the organization. If, for example, issues relating to password is a big problem in my organization, I should develop my content to include that. My cybersecurity program should not include things that does not really apply to the organization. I can give a perfect example. So something related to physical security. Let's say you are, you are a firm um, that has all your patients online. Security in terms of uh, physical security would be less of a priority to you compared to an organization that has an office. Right. So you want to make sure your cybersecurity is still out towards your risk assessment. The next step is, you know, developing a training plan. So the reason why I said an organization has to develop a training plan is there is a saying that says what works today might not work tomorrow in terms of cybersecurity. Right. You might have, you know, a very strong cybersecurity training program now, but in a year from now or probably six months from now it might not you know, be very good anymore, especially with the, you know, with the rise in technology. So you wanna make sure you have a training plan, plan in place. The plan would also involve you know, how many times do you have to do you know, a review of your cybersecurity program, what your cybersecurity program has to cover and so on. Another thing you wanna do is to create engaging content. So, that is a, a very important one. Having a cybersecurity program that can draw people's attention, right? I know so most of us have these issues. When we are being assigned a cybersecurity training video, we just want to go through it so fast because sometimes it's very boring, right? But if you have a content that is really good and can engage its readers, you know, it would help boost your cybersecurity program. Also involve real life examples. Make sure you put in examples within the training program, because if I don't know how this applies, it's going to be very difficult, you know, to implement it. If I'm telling you physical security and I don't know how to implement physical security, or there is no scenario of which I could think about that, it's going to be a big problem. And the last but not the least is testing and evaluating your cybersecurity program. You need to test your cybersecurity program because you know, you, you have to know if your employees understand the content. You have to know if it's something that they can implement. You have to know if it's actually, you know, working. So having a probably a yearly review of your program is very key. Now, I use the word probably because it, it may differ, you know, amongst different organizations, right? Some organization needs to do theirs every year depending on the kind of products they have or depending on the security within the organization. Some can do it quarterly. Whatever fits your organization, just make sure you are testing and you are evaluating your cybersecurity program. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want to see your name on a report where you failed the phishing test. <laughs> you said some really great things there, Victor, particularly around you know, really the need to continue to adapt your program. I found that really interesting. And I think that, you know, we can put a program together and feel really good about that. But the reality is the threat landscape is just evolving so rapidly. And so you made a great point there. I mean, what you accommodated for perhaps six months ago may be different today. I think about how threat actors are bypassing MFA as an example. Something that people didn't think about six to eight months ago, but now, you know, you want to make those considerations. And so I think it's really interesting that 
it's not a static program. I mean, it does need to evolve and change over time. And I really liked your comment about making the content engaging and interesting. It really, I think, helps people understand the connection between the content and their everyday work and the things that they need to, to keep their eyes and ears out for. So great. Yeah, that was, that was really great, Victor. Okay. So Victor, my final question is around, you know, the tools and approaches to use. So are there any tools, approaches, or methods that you would recommend startups look at to build a security awareness training program? There are tools out there that could help you, you know, achieve your cybersecurity awareness training program. Carbide Security Platform you can integrate with your organization or with your awareness training. We have things like videos, it has tests and various tools that you can use to ensure that your employees, you know, understand the goal of your cybersecurity program. There are also standalone tools that exist out there that could give you like individual content, such as maybe videos alone, some of them could be games, some of them could also be simulators, um, but there exist tools out there that could help you achieve this. Yeah, that's a good point. I think security training and awareness is, is one part of building a full security and privacy compliance solution. And I think as the vice president of sales and marketing at Carbide, absolutely, we can help our customers with that, not only with the awareness training piece, but also helping them develop, manage, and maintain a security program. But yeah, I mean, there's lots of standalone tools that are out there as well. Well, thank you so much, Victor. This was really enlightening. I know this will be very helpful for, you know, anybody out there who's looking to build a program for the first time. To recap, there's lots of tools out in the market that can help just with security awareness training or full tools such as Carbide that can also help with building your information security program and alignment and compliance to various frameworks. You know, we talked a lot about some of the key steps to building your, your program. And I, I loved when you said this, because I, I think this is really where great security starts is, is starting with a risk assessment and understanding what are your risks, what are your gaps and, and building your programs as well as your training around that to make sure that your employees are protecting the company. And I think we talked a lot about security awareness as a culture in an organization, and I think that that was really enlightening. Security is not just the IT team or you know, the chief information security officer or the chief privacy officer's mandate. It really is everybody's responsibility in the organization. So Victor, thank you so much for speaking with me today and enlightening our audience on uh, fundamentals around cybersecurity awareness training. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.